You know, I wonder what a freedom of information request would do for a search of the photograph of Osama bin Laden. You'd, you'd need to make an argument that's in the, that it's in the public interest, convenience, and necessity, that the government is of, by, and for the people, that the government works for the people, that when the government killed Osama bin Laden, it did, it of, it did so of and by the people, and that the people deserve some basic photographic evidence, the best evidence available to prove to the people that the government has done what the people get it. Freedom of information request. I think it's time to file a freedom of information request. I don't really personally care to see this photo, Je Jessica. I, I believe he's dead, and I, I don't care. But that's sort of what we do, right? Report what happens. I think the Fox News Channel needs to file a freedom of information request and try to get that photo. They might as well try. I'm, I'm suggesting that now, officially, please, uh, lawyers and stuff. Let's file a freedom of information request. Let's see if we can get that photograph, because that's how things work. It's America. Of course, Osama bin Laden was not hiding in a cave, as we were led to believe for a long time. And where was the dialysis machine? Anyway, he was in a large compound. It was more of a, it was more of a retreat than a cave. Upscale, quiet city, a number of Pakistani military officials are there. Here's Greg Palcott reporting earlier from Abbottabad in Pakistan. You know, if you have to hide out somewhere as a world-class terrorist, Abbottabad is not a bad place to be. It is scenic, it is safe, it's secure, and now it is the hub of the Pakistani military. Pakistan Military Academy is here, two regiments are based here, the Medical Corps, an intelligence office here, 120,000 active and reserve officers come through here every day in the past few years under the nose of Osama bin Laden. Meantime, Pakistanis in the city where bin Laden was hiding out, Abbottabad, today are protesting the U.S. raid and voicing their anger with their own country's military. Not so much for what the United States did, but over the fact that the Pakistani military didn't do anything about it. They're carrying signs reading, Wake up, Army! A number of folks there now calling their usually well-respected armed forces incompetent. Others claiming they felt insecure because U.S. forces were able to sneak into the country so easily. And the word was we did it, you know, flying low. And uh, just flying right into that compound, and 40 minutes later, done deal. A growing group of United States officials demanding answers from Pakistan on what it knew exactly of Osama bin Laden's luxury getaway there. Of course, bin Laden was living just a few hundred yards, frankly, from the Pakistani equivalent of West Point at their main military academy. The Pakistani prime minister says, the whole world, not Pakistan alone, end quote, is responsible for the intelligence failure. <laughs> Pakistan's foreign secretary adds they alerted the United States intelligence to this location years ago. With us now from San Diego, journalist, author of the book, The World's Most Dangerous Places, Robert Young Pelton. He used to live down the street from the now dead Osama bin Laden. How do you feel about him being dead there, Rob? That's good. It's, uh, it's going to disappoint that guy with a sword, Gary, what's his name, but I think most people are happy. <laughs> I'd forgotten about the guy who went over there to kill you, BL. Totally forgotten about him. Are you, are you familiar with Abbottabad or Abbottabad, as they put it? Yeah, it's a tourist town. It's where you go before you head out into the northern areas. It's, it's, it's a nice place. And military retire there, I guess, and there are a lot of military bases and stuff? Yeah, it's, it's obviously a military stronghold like Rawalpindi. And um, as you know, we've discussed my ideas of where bin Laden was. And it was one of the two places that I would have zeroed in on as being ideal for him. So, so uh, what, I, I guess it's about 1,800 yards from, or something like that from where the, this academy entrance is. Can, can you see a, a, a world of plausibility where it, it might be plausible that he j could just live there under their noses and nobody know it? No, you got to remember this house is actually owned by uh, a terrorist group that fights in Kashmir, and, mm. and that group is funded specifically by the ISI or the Pakistani Intelligence Service. It's essentially what the CIA call a safe house. It's set up for not just Bin Laden, but people moving through the area up into Kashmir to fight, and also a, a meeting area for military people. If you if you step back from the photo, you'll see that it's actually quite out in the you know it's by itself, so yeah. you can go in and out. But, but there's something to be said for this relationship under which the Pakistanis can say one thing and do another, because on some levels they are helping us, and on some levels they are helping us get to more terrorists than any other country. I, I think that's a documented fact. 
No, I think they're getting rid of the terrorists that bother them, like right. the Pakistani Taliban. Uh, you've you got to remember, they still haven't invaded certain areas in Pakistan, like North Waziristan, specifically because they don't want to get Haqqani and, and some of the old school guys that uh, bin Laden used to work with. So it, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, we use them to go get the Russians, but they also uh, betray us on a regular basis. Does our money go to the moderates? Because one of the arguments is, if we stop sending the money, the extremists will take over. Well, I think our money is like desert rain. You know, there's a lot up top, but not much hits the ground. I think it's basically filtered off by the military and the, the ruling elite there. It's, it's not much gets onto the actual ground. And, and keep in mind that when you say terrorism, uh, Pakistan's focus is not on Afghanistan. They're more concerned about India invading them. So they need to have these poison pills, guys like bin Laden and Haqqani and Hekmatyar, in their backyard. I mean, the Taliban sits very safely in Quetta and, and uh, Karachi, and we still can't find Mullah Omar, and he's right there. That's true. We supposedly can't find Mullah Omar. Good to see you, Robert mm -hmm. Young Pelton. <laughs> My pleasure, Chef. Hey, I have an idea. Put that photo behind the paywall and let the money go to the victims of bin Laden. Now, that's a good idea. If you couldn't forward it, put the money behind a paywall and, f and get the money to the victims. I don't mind that. Put the photo. Bin yeah, Laden's photo. That's yep. what I'm saying. We can, we can ask the victims' families if, what do they think about that. In the meantime, it's time to fire up a Freedom of Information cool. Act request. Robert Young Pelton, chilling in San Diego. Good to see you, sir. We all know that the Libyan leader, now don't forget, there's still ravaged with tornadoes down in Alabama. Well, I just got word from Judge Napolitano, our senior judicial analyst, you know, about this Freedom of Information Act request for the federal government on these photos of Osama bin Laden, and I should have known. I'm going to read you the email that I got from the judge. During the George W. Bush administration, Congress enacted legislation that permits the president to classify any document he wants, anything, without judicial review, and classified docu documents are not subject to FOIA, the Freedom of Information Act. So there's nothing we can do. Which means if they want to leak them later, they will. And if they don't, they won't. But tonight we're not getting pictures of Osama bin Laden, and we'll live with it. And that's fine. I'm Shepard Smith. That's it for Studio B. The big board's not coming in here again today. I don't know why. What up, Neil?